And we thank you, Lord, when there wasn't nobody there with us, that you are always there with us and always having our back. Lord, we thank you for who you are and we worship you today in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Bible tells us in his word how gracious God is to us. And all year long, I think you can probably recall when God has showed up for you when you didn't expect him to show up. But he showed up for you. And you are breathing, you are living, and you are alive, and you are in the house of God today on the last day of the year. This is what we are called to do. Let's worship the Lord and his word here today. But before I do that, I want to say there's some beautiful people that I had a chance to meet this year. And I'm so thankful for the new people that come to this church. And I want to congratulate Lonely and Gabe on their engagement. They're going to get married. It's a wonderful to, 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 to see they getting married. It's wonderful. I want to thank the Lord for another incredible testimony. And that is Patricia. Patricia Hazelwood. It's her 38th birthday today. Patricia, we love you and we thank you. We remember when you first walked into the church and how we just did not know what God was going to do, but God saved you, God resurrected you, and God brought you into the Reborn Church, and we're thankful for what God is doing in your life. But I'm immensely thankful for all the young people that do call this their home church. I'm thankful for the OGs that are in this church, all the OGs that have been with us for 10 plus years. And thank you so much. All year long, you've been worshiping with us, and we wouldn't be able to make it without your support. We wouldn't be able to do it without your support, so I'm thankful for all of you. Also, there's one special person I want to thank, and she's not here. She's out in Abu Dhabi. She supports the church all year long, and many of you guys, maybe you met Lori Brown, who was working Bless the Block many times along Lisa and Anthony. She's out in the Middle East, but she always ties and bless the church every month, and she said, can you pray for the ministry out there because there are people that are coming to know Christ Jesus. They're living a life for the Hinduism, living life for the Arab Muslim world, but that they're coming to Christ and their lives are in danger. And she said that a lot of people are coming to Jesus, amen, right in the Middle East. And you know, when you come to Christ out there, your life is in danger. And so today, I I, I, I know that she's watching. Laura, we pray for you. We pray for the ministry out there that God has blessed you with. And we are thankful for you and your support throughout the year. The rest of us, please turn in your Bibles to the book of Colossians chapter 2. This is where I am today. Now, I taught this message before. I taught this message when we did the book of Colossians before at the other church, but I wanted to be able to give this message to you today because I want you to know it's a new year, but we have the same commitment. It's a new year, but we have to have the same commitment. Now, somewhere along the line, there are some things that we go through, places that that we see and things we shouldn't do, and it struggled with our assignment and our commitment. Now, only you know what that is. Only you know what that is. Maybe you walked into this church here today, and you don't know who the Lord is, but we rest assured that you're going to know who the Lord and the God of the Bible is here today. The Word is going to be preached, and you will know who Jesus is here today and what he has done to save us because we were a bunch of walking dead people. But now we are alive in Christ Jesus. And and this book here is an incredible book because it's about a growing and healthy church. We want our church to be growing and we want our church to be healthy. Now, a lot of times we may look the part, but inside we are still hurting. There are some things that we haven't been able to let go. But I want to tell you today, don't go into 2024 still carrying the same mess from 23. Let it go, cut it off, and move on into 2024. Whatever it is, you got to be able to deal with. If you're still angry, let go of the anger. If you're still unforgiven, let go of the unforgiveness. If you're still bitter, let go of the bitterness. If you're all these things that are holding you back, you need to let it go and don't take it into 2024 because it's a new year and the same commitment. You guys have your Bibles turned to Colossians chapter 2. I'm going to read from the first verse and because I'm blind, I can't really see up here. I'm going to watch the monitor up here. Praise the Lord. Colossians chapter 2, and thank you all for standing for the reading of God's word, but if you can't and you are not physically able, it's fine. You can take a seat. The Bible says, for I want you to know how great a struggle I have for you and for those at Laodicea and for all who have not seen me face to face, that their hearts may be encouraged, being knit together in love to reach all the riches, a full assurance of understanding and the knowledge of God's mystery, which is Christ, in whom are all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. 
I say this in order that no one may delude you with plausible arguments. For though I am absent in body, yet I am with you in spirit, rejoicing to see your good order and the firmness of your faith in Christ. Therefore, as you receive Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. See to it that no one takes you captive by philosophy and empty deceit according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the world, and not according to Christ. For in him the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily. And you have been filled in him, who is the head of all rule and authority. In him also you were circumcised with a circumcision made without hands by putting off the body of flesh by the circumcision of Christ, having been buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through faith in the powerful working of God who raised him from the dead. And you, who were dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made alive together with him, having forgiven us all our trespasses by canceling the record of debt that stood against us with its legal demands this he set aside, nailing to the cross, he disarmed the rulers and authorities and put them to open shame by triumphing over them in him. Therefore, let no one pass judgment on you when questions of food and drink or with regard to a festival or a new moon or a Sabbath. These are the shadow of things to come, but the substance belongs to Christ. You may have a seat. Amen. Let me pray. I thank you, Lord, for your written word. I thank you for where... You are teaching us today and what your word will instruct us here today. I'm thankful, Lord, for the people of God that are in your house today that have come on December 31st, the last day of the year. As we go into a new year, Lord, we pray, Lord, that there would be an inventory check internally. There would be some things that we would let go of and things that we need to cut off so that we can be better witnesses, better ambassadors, better powerful men and women of God for your glory. Lord, help me to speak today without error. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, church. Amen. The Bible is clear, hearing his word and studying his word today. I'm, I'm thankful because this is the final message of 2023. But what an unusual year it really has been. There's been some things I would say that, that sometimes it just blew our mind. There's some ups and some downs. There's some joys and some sorrows. And, and I love to, I thank God for it all. I do. I thank God even for the bad days and for the bad hours and the bad moments, because even that has a purpose. Would you agree, church? Now, this year. December 31st, towards the end of this, the last day of the year, all of you guys know that when you turn on the TV, you're going to find maybe the top 10 uh, highlights of the year in sports. Maybe the top 10 things that happen in the culture. Maybe the top 10 things that happen in the comedy world and the movies and all this stuff is a top 10. But I'm telling you, today we know that there's a new year and the same commitment. There's so many reasons why we need to praise God. There's so many things that he has done for us that we need to praise God. So I'm giving you five reasons here this morning that you could praise God. I want you to thank God for the struggles and for the disappointments. You remember how it was when you felt you were disappointed and, and, and what you were going through and you just were struggling with it, but you better thank God because without the struggles and the disappointments, there is no joy and there is no victory. There is no triumphant attitude and victorious living if you don't have a little bit of struggle and you don't have some disappointments. But I thank God for the ups and downs of ministry. For those of you that are in ministry, for those of you that are members and you understand why you're a member, that you are involved in ministry, all of you know about the ups and downs of ministry. Some days are better than others. Some days you say, I don't want to work with this person anymore. Some days you're saying, this person talks too much. And some days you just thank God because that person says the right thing to you and it blesses you on that day. Because I thank God for the ups and downs of, of, of life, ups and downs, of course, of ministry. Number three. Number three, and I thank God for the hard days and the hard nights. Those hard days and hard nights, you know how it was when you just could not go to sleep. Many of you here are struggling to sleep at night because you're so worried. You got so much anxiety. There's so many things that are happening in your life right now or last year or the beginning of 2023 that you just can't get any sleep. I say that the greatest act of worship is if you do sleep and go to sleep well and say, I'm giving it to God. I'm not going to carry this to my pillow. I'm not going to carry this as I get the sheet over me, but I'm going to rest in God and I'm not going to worry about it anymore. I know it's easier said than done, but that's an act of worship when you just close your eyes 
eyes and you rest and thank God for what's happening in your life. Number four, and this is a powerful one because I can relate to this and I know a lot of you can relate to this. You need to thank God in 2023 and going into 2024 that he saved you, rescued you from impulses, impulses of personal pleasure that you overcame by the power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, that's a silent one. They may not get too many amens, but I tell you what, you better thank God that there's some times when you did not pick up that phone or you did not dial that number or you had no gas in your car to get to where somewhere you wanted to go or somebody just cut you off because they wanted to get right with God and maybe you were headed down the wrong direction. God shows up to strengthen you. God shows up to show you that he will give you the victory over those impulses where you are wanting personal pleasure. Yeah, you want personal pleasure, and God says don't do it, but sometimes we just do it, and no one ain't going to know about it. We're just going to do it, but God knows all things. You better thank God for that, and he knows all things, and I thank the Lord for conviction. And number five, finally, this is, this is, this is important because each and every one of you here, whether you're a teacher, whether you're a student, whether you sign a W-2, no matter who you are, you better thank the Lord. Better thank the Lord because he placed you on a platform. He placed you on a platform so that you can vocalize your faith publicly. Wherever it is, that's the platform that he's placed you in. Whatever you do, if you punch a time clock, whatever you do, this is what God has given you so that you can use that platform to give him praise publicly. Because God is looking for some people that aren't afraid to walk around with the Bible. God is looking for some people. And I've seen this young man. It was amazing. He's at the Christmas party and he walks in. He's got a Bible in his hand. Not too many people do that, but that young man will walk in with a Bible in his hand. There's some people that go to work and they say, I'm going to worship God and I'm going to read my Bible at work. I'm not going to read my Bible on the clock, but I'll read it on my break time. There's some people that are unashamedly who want to serve the Lord. That's what we need to be. It's a healthy church that's unashamedly going to praise the name of the Lord no matter where they go or what they do or what career choice they may have or whatever goal they have. They're going to worship the Lord unashamedly and give God the glory, give God the glory for all things. New year, same commitment. Let's go to the text again. Aaron, if you could put that verse text back up there. The Bible says this is Paul teaching the people at uh, Colossae, in the church of Colossae, because there's a lot of people that were trying to get a lot of the believers there. It was a healthy church, but there were a lot of people there that were trying to give people uh, a way to mix your Christianity with astrology, your Christianity with aestheticism, your Christianity with other idol worship. Before I get there, I just want you to know that whatever noun you have for you young people that are in the church today, you guys know what a noun is. Some of us older people forget what a noun is. But you young people know what a noun is. It's a what? It's a person, place, a thing. So whatever noun is an idol in your life, you better cut it off. You better let go. You better let go of it. It's a person, it's a place, or it's a thing. That's that one thing that's keeping you from growing in your faith. Now, he said, for I want you to know how great a struggle I have for you and for those at Laodicea and for all who have not seen me face to face. He's getting real personal with the church here. Go on to the next text. Then it says that their hearts may be encouraged, being knit together in love to reach all the riches of full assurance of understanding and the knowledge of God's mystery. What is God's mystery? That God has saved. God has saved all nationalities outside of those who are ethnic Israel, those who are ethnically uh, Jewish people, that the Gentiles would be saved. That's the mystery. And people, the Jewish people didn't understand it. Why is God saving the other nations? Why is God? I thought we were God's chosen people. But something happens here. And it's an incredible thing that happens that God required the Jewish people in the book of Exodus and also in the book of Joshua and the book of Genesis that God would require the people of Israel to be circumcised. Oh, we got to get graphic on this one on this final day. Now, you guys know what circumcision is in the Old Testament. That is when God had commanded Moses, had commanded Joshua, had commanded Abraham and the people of the Abrahamic covenant to take a rock. It's called a flint. Break the rock and crack the rock and take the sharp edge of the rock and go to every male, every male, and cut it off the foreskin on every male. And we're talking about men who are older. <laughs> Painful, isn't it? Painful, isn't it? Now, when you come to God, when you come to the Lord, there's a time of joy, but there's also a time of pain and disappointment. 
There's also a time of pain and disappointment. You come to faith in Christ Jesus, and they tell you when they preach to you that the road is going to be wonderful. Everything's going to be great, but they can't tell you what the truth is, and that is it's going to be a struggle. There's, there's going to be a war. There's going to be a fight. And once you come to Christ and God circumcised your heart, that's when. You feel wounded. That's when you feel hurt. That's when you are still. That's why you need discipleship. That's why you need to grow because the enemy will come immediately and attack you. Now, we've had some wonderful baptisms here. You guys know wonderful people. And many of them are here. They're here and they understand. They say, yeah, Pastor Eric said it. Pastor Gabe said it. You said it was going to be a war once I got baptized. Once God has circumcised my heart, it was going to be a war. You told me it was going to be a war, and I saw the enemy coming. But for others, even though you say things, even though you tell them it's coming, they still are gone. They got baptized, and where did they go? That's why baptized, bap being baptized is a serious thing. It's a real commitment because just like it's a real commitment, there's a real war, and there's a real enemy who wants to destroy you and pull you away from the vocation that God has for you on your life. Now, in Joshua, what God does for Joshua, he did from what God does for Moses, he does for Joshua. Joshua has the Jordan River parted by the very breath of God, and he parts the Jordan River so that the people of Israel who were not wandering in the wilderness the people of Moses and the people of Israel, the, all of Moses' people, uh, the followers of Moses there, they all struggled. They, they were rescued from the exodus after the 10 plagues. God gives Moses an assignment. God tells, go tell Pharaoh, let my people go. And the people then go after 10 plagues. And of course, you guys know the story of the Passover. You guys know that. The people of Israel are then marching around one mountain for 40 years and because they doubted to go into Canaan. They doubted to go into the, into the promised land. But God does something for Joshua. And God tells Joshua to do the same thing. And this time God shows up and shows Joshua and they enter in to the promised land. Now one of the things that God does, and he did this, he had the people of in Joshua's generation, they must have been circumcised. They must be circumcised as well before they can go into the Canaan area, into the Canaan land, the land of milk and honey. They must be circumcised. Now for you, it's a spiritual circumcision. Going down to the other text, where Aaron, go down to like until you find it where it says circumcision. But when you get there, I want you to pause because this is something that has happened to each and every one of you when you became born again, when the Holy Spirit descended upon you and saved you and resurrected you and gave you new life is that the circumcision of the heart takes place. The circumcision takes place, meaning you become a new creation. But there's things that you have to do now every day to make sure that you are in line with God. It's like the circumcision of the heart daily. It says, and you have been filled in him who is the head of all rule and authority. In him also you were circumcised with the circumcision made without hands. Although there wasn't a physical rock that took off the foreskin, we were circumcised by the rock whom is Christ Jesus. And he sanctifies us and he justifies us and he gives us a new life. And by putting off the body of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ Jesus. It's a new year, but the commitment is the same. We got to cut away the things in our life. There's a cutting away. So the Lord says, you know what? I'm going to replace this heart of flesh, this heart of stone with a heart of flesh so that you can follow after me, so that you can understand moral law, so you can live to glorify my name. And so God does this. But there's things in our personal life and personal renewal that we need to cut off. You got to cut it off. You guys know that when you go to the airport, a lot of you fly, a lot of you take and have frequent flyer miles and you fly and you go to the airport, you are allowed to take on one bag for free. But if you have other bags, you gotta check them in. If you have other bags that you take to the airport and you try to walk on with them, they're gonna stop you and say, you gotta check that in. There's things that you are doing in your life right now that you're trying to go into the new year and you're still taking some old luggage that you need to leave behind. You need to check it in with God. And whatever it is, it may be an old relationship. It may be some unforgiveness. It may be some bitterness. It may be things that you are angry about, but you need to cut it off and let it go. There may be some people that you need to cut off. There may be some people in your life that you just got to say, you know what? I've tried. I'm done. And I need to keep it moving. I got to cut it off. I can't go into 2024 with the same attitude. I can't keep going into 24 with the same struggle. I want to be healthy. I want to be stronger. I want to get better. And how do we do that? We do that by cutting away things in our life. It's the changing of the heart. It's the, a part of the household of faith that we are of. I'm so thankful because knowing that you know that you are born again, if you are born again and you know that you are born again without a shadow of a doubt, you will be in the city of God. Now, you guys know 
just like every year, December 31st, December 30th and 31st, always somebody dies that gets your attention. There's always somebody that dies that don't make 2024. But didn't make the year prior. But it's like they almost got there, but their time was up. And a lot of times you know that they never lived the life for God, that they weren't in Christ, but they were in the world. They were, they were in bondage. They were still in Egypt. They were still being slaves to sin, and they died and they perished. And it's always a big name that gets everybody's attention. But I'll tell you somebody that went to the city of God this year, that walked into this church the past year, that was in the church worshiping with you, singing the Lord's praises. He was an older man who walked in with his Bible all the time. He was an older man who worried about his shoes, but God was providing all his needs. He was an older man that walked through the place and he sang the glory of the Lord. He sang right along with you. And then he went to sleep on the couch and then he didn't wake up. But you know what? He knew Christ Jesus. Around right God's time is impeccable. God's time is remarkable because he walked in here. I don't know his situation. But I know when we were at his funeral, Dave and I and all the other brothers, we were there and we heard his dad say, we heard this family say, they said, you know what? We're so thankful that he came back to Christ. We're so thankful that he found the church and he was serving the Lord. But he's in the city of God. He's in the glory of God right now. And that's something that I'm overjoyed and I'm so thankful about. And that was Brother Richard. He was a vet. You guys remember Brother Richard? Yeah, he was a vet. But he loved the Lord. He loved the Denver Nuggets, but he loved the Lord. And I was like saying to myself today in the church, I said, man, I, I was just praying back there earlier in the day. And I said, you know what's funny about the Reborn Church is that some of the days that, and Bocab, we could talk about this, some of the days that you may think that some of the church uh, days are, 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 are like, there's going to be not a lot of people on certain days. And you can kind of say well, in, in the church circles that maybe Father's Day is not well attended. Maybe the day after Christmas, the, the, the Father is never well attended. But for some reason, at the Reborn Church, you guys just show up every Sunday and you want to worship the Lord. And I'm not going to say it was because the Cowboys won by a point yesterday. Y'all happy. But you are in church. But you are in church and you know it's the last day of the year. And you want to thank the Lord for his goodness and for his mercy. And he is good. And I'm so thankful for personal renewal, circumcision of the heart. But what keeps you from personal renewal? What is it? that you can say to yourself and say to yourself internally, what is it that's keeping me from growing in my maturity level? Where am I in 2023? Am I still an adolescent? Am I still a babe? Am I, am I a young adult? Or am I at that level where I'm getting to be a spiritual, mature, fire-filled fire Christian that won't take any mess and is able to say, I without a shadow of a doubt know that God is worthy to be praised no matter what happens in my life. It's been an unusual year, and I'm so thankful that Pastor Eric had stepped up, is stepping up and leading the church and teaching the church. You know how that makes me feel when one of your own, your own blood, your own child, who you raised is serving the Lord, teaching the Bible, and loves to teach the Bible, loves to preach and loves to teach. You know how I feel when I see Robert and I see all the young men who are still in the church and are still worshiping the Lord and are preaching and are like a lion chopping at the bit. Pastor, give me an opportunity to preach the word of God. I want to preach. I want to teach. Man, you know how that feels and what that makes you feel like? You feel so good. Because the young people of the day, you see what they're hungry after. The young people of the day, they, they are not circumcised by the heart. But young people need to be circumcised by the heart because their biggest addiction, the young people today, the biggest addiction that the young people have is attention. They want all the attention. But you know what? You got to let it go. You got to cut it off. You got to take your life and your faith and your walk with God to another level in 24. You got to do it because things are changing. And now what we need with the circumcision of the heart, and God circumcised the people of Israel because he said, you know what, I'm going to mark you. I'm going to mark you so that you don't mix in with everybody else. I'm going to mark you so that you don't blend in like everybody else. As a Christian, as a born-again believer who understands why Christ came into the world to suffer and die for your sins, to take your on your sin debt and erase it and wipe it off and give you his righteousness, you understand why forgiveness is required. And you understand what that means. And so why God does all of that, and we're just thinking about it and praising God for it, is that so many times there are young people that are getting caught up in culture, getting caught up in the world, and God 
is going to rescue them. But when God rescues you, young people, the people that are in church to say, yes, I serve the Lord. Yes, I know who Jesus is. Yes, I read my Bible. Yes, I pray. You are the ones that are not supposed to mix in with the rest of them. You are the ones that are not supposed to blend in with all the others. But you are to stand in truth and righteousness. Yeah, you're supposed to stand in truth and righteousness. It's hard to do in today's society when if you just say the wrong thing, people want to cut you off. But if you stand for truth and righteousness in Christ Jesus, let them cut you off. Let them cut you off because you need to make a statement about your faith and what God has done for you and where God is taking you into the new year. It's wonderful to see young people of faith who know Jesus because the young people of today are following further and further away from who Christ is. But we can't let it happen. We need to teach our young people who Jesus is, who the Father is, who the Holy Spirit is, that God is a triune being, that God is distinct in three persons, that God is one, that God would send his son. God the Father sends his son into the world to live a life for you that none of you are capable of living. And then to mark you, they send the Holy Spirit. God's Spirit comes and takes up residence in your life to seal you for the day of redemption. So you ain't got to worry about tomorrow. So you ain't got to worry about if tomorrow's your last night. Because no matter what, you will be in the city of God. Amen. Being in the city of God. And the Bible of the Revelation speaks about the city of God. It says that the glass, the, the, the streets are like glass, but like gold and shiny. And I think about the beauty of heaven. And that we got family that's there. 10 years in the church, 10 years in the church, we've seen people come. We've seen people be born again, and then they passed on, and they're in the city of God. Circumcision of the heart is so important for you to remember going into next year because we want you to be healthy. We want you to be strong. We want you to look good for the glory of God. And we can do it, but we need each other. We need each other. Now, when you serve the Lord, you know that there's some things that you must confess. You must confess some things in your life that you just need to share with somebody, trust somebody to hold, that will hold you accountable so that you confess. And you have to remember the circumcision of the heart that Christ does this for us. You must confess and not suppress whatever is happening in your life. Because if you suppress whatever is happening in your life and you've been angry, guess what? That anger will then start to deal with you. If you've been walking with unforgiveness and strife and anger, whatever it may be, if you don't deal with it, that strife and that bitterness, all of that begins to deal with you. And then you start becoming a little bit more aggressive. You start saying, well, where, where's the humility? Somebody may look at you and say, where's the humility in that brother? Where's the humility in that sister? I don't see what's happening. And then we can tell, I think they may have put down their Bible. I think they are no longer maybe looking at the app on their phone. Now, I don't mind you having a phone and looking on your app and on the phone. That's wonderful. But you've got to be able to read and remember that to be a healthy Christian, you need to read. You need to drink water and don't drink Coca-Cola. You need to drink more water this year. Drink more water. Let go of some of that sugar and cut it off. I'm speaking from experience, y'all. Y'all know what's up. Lost 20-something pounds because it cut off the sugar. And sugar is good. You love sugar. But I, I told Brother Jose, he said, Brother Jose, what I did, man, because I'm trying to, like, just mentally working on myself, mentally working. I said, I bought some butter cookies. You know those butter cookies for Christmas in the tin can? <laughs> and many of you know that I love those butter cookies. And I took those butter cookies and I put them right there on my coffee table right before the TV. And I watch the TV and I just look at the butter cookies. And I never opened up those butter cookies. Not once did I open them up. Aaron did, but I didn't open them up. And it's like, you have to remember there's some things in your life that you just need to cut out so that you can become healthy. You have to become healthy. And it's just amazing because those are some of the things we do. But to crucify and mortify the deeds of the flesh, to remember the circumcision of Christ, you must cut things off in your life. It's something you habitually have to practice to do. You, you practice this, you, you apply this to your life every day. One of the greatest quotes in sports was when Allen Iverson was asked about practice. Many of you know about that. If you're my age, you know. Many people probably don't even know who AI is. AI, <laughs> AI said, practice? You're talking about practice, man. I ain't pra I'm all about the game. 
But he don't understand at that time that practice was important for everybody on his team. We want to play together. We want to work together. We want to know your style. We want to know how your game is. But if it only comes, it only gels together if we practice together. That's why Bible study every week is important, that we come together and read the word together, that we come together and confess and sometimes don't allow things to be suppressed. You do that with the body of Christ so that you can be healthy. And you're going to be challenged every day, every day to abide in Christ. You must abide in Christ. Without abiding in Christ, there is no life. All there is is struggle, and there's extreme disappointment. But I thank the Lord, and I'm sure a lot of you can thank the Lord as well for all the times that God showed up for you. You remember when God shut the lying lips in your life. You know, when people are saying some negative things about you, but you didn't have to vindicate yourself. You just allowed the Lord to do it. And God will shut them up. You know that when God is working in your life is that when you start hearing rumors, God will close down the rumor mill. He will close it down. But but the challenge is, is not to try to do something yourself, to vindicate yourself or whatever is happening, because all of that is designed to affect your walk with Christ. All of it is. And he delivered you from the naysayers. Because there's people, many of you know, that when you're a Christian, people are going to talk bad about you. When you're a Christian and you stand for truth and righteousness, they're going to say they're going to say something negative about you. You know what it's like when you stand up and you say the Bible teaches us this and I believe the Bible. I believe what the Bible says and I'm going to stand on what the Bible says not what anybody else says or any idea anybody else has. But when you stand on truth, a lot of people don't like it. They like relativism, meaning I like to think whatever it feels good to me, it's relevant to me, that's the way it is. Now, I've been watching some stuff, and I've been studying on some things, and I've, I've, I've noticed, and I had a conversation yesterday about a brother, and we were talking about people who are atheists and people who don't believe in God, who people say that, you know, why do you believe in the Bible? It was written by man. People that say that we, the earth is millions and millions of years, six million years old or whatever it is, and, and man is, uh, uh, comes from, from the animals and comes from, and all these ideas that people have, and they have a powerful influence because they got other people believing that same thing. But whatever it is, that noun that was in our life before Christ, it was a person, it was a place, or it was a thing. It could have been some ideology, some way of life that you believed, but when Christ opens up your eyes and you see the truth and you understand the truth, it's like nothing that's, it's like nothing that's, you can compare it to. It's beautiful to know, man, that Jesus is real. Everybody knows that Jesus walked the earth. And people say things about Jesus. At the very least, even people that don't believe in Jesus will say that he's a prophet. But he was more than a prophet. He was the son of God, the eternal son of God, who existed before eternity passed, who was always with the Father and the Holy Spirit. He was always there. And for him to come to the world, to be incarnate, to rescue us from the day of reckoning, from the day of reckoning. Last week, there was a big boxing event. And I, I laughed and I chuckled because the name of this boxing event was called the day of reckoning. It was in England. It was a day of reckoning. But the reality is there's a day of reckoning for everybody that was at that fight, for everybody who sits in the stands, for all the fighters who walk into that ring, there's a day of reckoning. And there's a day of reckoning that us will one day face, but judgment has passed over us. The judgment of God has passed over you, and you may say to yourself, and this is a reason to shout, because you won't be charged with the crime that you committed against God. You have been been delivered. From the enemy's grip. You have been delivered from yourselves. You've been delivered from the flesh. You've been delivered from all the crimes that you made against a holy and righteous God. That judgment has passed over you. That the day of reckoning for you is a day of joy. Because you will see the the city of God. And he is worthy to be praised. He is so worthy to be praised. And I'm thankful. I'm thankful for that very thing. Because when we vocalize our faith with the platform that God has given us, we can't worry about the results. Just say something about Christ. Bless the name of the Lord this year. Be a better witness this coming year. Be healthier this coming year. Partake in ministry and don't be afraid. Don't let doubt seep in. Don't let fear come in. Let that go. Cut that off and join the ministry. Be a part of what's happening here. And for all of you that know and you do, you know what's up. You know what's up all year long. There's times where we just find moments of joy that, that are just un- uncomparable. When, when y'all got together last week and put together the, the Christmas outreach, that, that's incredible joy to see all those people 
being blessed, that someone loves them enough to feed them. Someone loves them enough to clothe them. All year long, sister, you're doing that. All year long, you're out there serving and making God known to the people in your world. Continue to do that. But be mindful. Be mindful that you must be healthy, just like every fighter, every fighter that fights, every whether you're MMA, UFC, whatever, a boxer, you have to train. You have to train your body. You have to train your mind. You have to be ready for the fight that's always coming. There's always war. The enemy never sleeps. And he's coming again. And there's a lot of people that don't know the truth, don't know the Lord, that they will know the Lord, we pray this year. Last year, I said at the beginning of the year, I pray that there's some people that you didn't believe would become born again. There's some people that you probably didn't think would know the Lord. And we see that young man right there, sitting right there. I mean, many probably have thought that we would never see someone like that coming to the Lord, but God is good. God is good. There's some people that are sitting in the, in the chairs today that may be saying to yourself, no one ever thought that I would be coming to the house of God this year. No one would ever believe that I'd be raising up my hands and say, how great is my God? but you're doing it and you did it because God is faithful and people have been praying for you and people still pray for you and we're going to continue to pray for you because we believe we believe without with all our heart that God can save people to the uttermost that God can save and deliver those people in your life that you know that need the Lord and we know some people right now that need Jesus we know some people right now that need to call on the Lord there's some things that are going to happen in their life that will compel them to call upon Jesus because remember when you hit your bottom and it was at the bottom and all you could do was look up and when you looked up you saw the hand of Jesus going down and grab and pick you up and give you life and give you life eternal and now there's this fire. You guys sang that song, Set a Fire. I pray that you are all fired up for the Lord. I pray that there's a flame burning within you, that you don't let go down and don't let dim, keep getting lower and lower, but ignite the fire, ignite the flame. And whatever it is that you know that needs to be ignited, we pray that it will be ignited by that very thing that you know it is. So don't let your prayer time diminish. Pray a little longer. Don't let your devotional time diminish. Devote your time to reading the Bible a little longer. Find somebody you can talk to that you can trust that the things that you are going through, maybe you know that they've been through that same thing. Increase your fellowship time with the, with the people of God. That's what we need. We need to come together, talk with one another, and grow with one another. And I'm so thankful that this is not the ending here. This, this is going to be another location. And, and, if, and I believe I believe what God is what God has done. I believe what God is going to do. There's going to be another location because there's got to be another location because we can't stay here because God's going to keep moving. God's going to expand us. God's going to grow the church. So get ready. Get ready for it. Get ready for it. You got to get ready for it. Are you ready to fight? You ready to be healthy this year? Remember the circumcision of Christ, the circumcision of the heart. Get stronger in your personal renewal. Let us pray, and remember when I'm praying, whatever it is that you know you need to cut out, I pray that you let it go, and you cut it out, and trust in the Lord. And for those of us who, who, who have been through some things this year, we know that God is the only one that can feel that desire in your heart. And he's here, and he wants to fill you with his love, fill you with his power, and we pray that you're receptive to the truth of God's word. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, I thank you for every person that are here, that's here today that is sitting in these chairs. I thank you, Lord, because they are your children. Lord, you circumcised their hearts. They were once dead, Lord. They were lost, but you found them and you brought them in and you gave them new life. And Lord, as history would continue to show us that the enemy doesn't stop. He's jealous of the very fact that you captured those possessions away from him. And now they belong to you. These wonderful children belong to you. And Lord, we know that because of that, there's a great struggle. There's a great fight. But we have joy in you. We're willing to face the burdens. We're willing to face the struggles and the disappointments because we know that there's so much that we look forward to in the joy of ministry, the joy of praying, the joy of reading, the joy of being in your presence and enjoying you forever, which you have called us to do as we teach in the catechism. 
Lord, I thank you for the men of God in this church or all the men that are here today. I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, you continue to light their fire, Lord. Let them burn with a passion that they didn't have in 23 that they'll have in 24. I pray, Lord, for the witness that you have you have blessed them to be, that it increases, that there's availability to show, who, show many who you are, Lord, in the faith. So I pray for our men. I pray for the head of household today in the name of Jesus. Equip them, strengthen in them and empower them through your word, Lord, that they are used as those broken vessels for your glory, for your glory. I pray for every God in this place, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for their role. I thank you, Lord, for their biblical role. I thank you, Lord, for what you are doing in their life, Lord, that they pray without ceasing, Lord. They serve and they never stop. They care and they have compassion for people, Lord. I pray for them. I pray for their strength, Lord. And I pray Lord, that their cries at night, that the answers, Lord, the answers lie with you, but the prayers will be answered, Lord. That the cries that they have at night, for the things that they are going through and the things that they keep bottled up, that not only do they no longer suppress it, but they confess it to you, Lord, that you can strengthen every woman of God in this place, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for our children. I thank you for the kids. I thank you for the young people, Lord, that the seeds are being planted, that they will believe, that you'll circumcise their heart in due time, that they will know the truth, that they will understand, God, that you are real and that you transform lives. And people are turned away from sin and they're turned to your face and in your presence. We love you and we thank you for everything that you've done here at this church, at this location in 23. Lord, I thank you, Lord, as we go forward in 24 right here. I thank you, Lord, for what the future is gonna bring. I thank you, Lord, for the people of God and the readers and the prayers, Lord, and the disciples that are here, Lord, that'll help strengthen and encourage this body because we are one, but we are all different members of the body. We all have different gifts, Lord. Help us to find and locate what those gifts are. And for those that do know those gifts, may they utilize them continually and be strengthened and sharpen them for your glory in 2024. May we be healthy. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. God bless you, church. Happy New Year to all and each and every one of you. Happy New Year. Have a great, great day. We love you and we thank you. And if you need